Hey guys, welcome back to Jurassic Collectibles and welcome back to the third part of building my display for my collection. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, check them out, links are down below. I show how I built this racking originally and also how I filled one portion uh, with Jurassic Park vintage cups. Links to those videos are down below, but today I want to fill these two portions with my Jurassic Park and Lost World maquettes collection. This part of my display is probably the most vertically spacious part of the racking and therefore putting the biggest objects in there uh, is a wise thing to do. And probably the biggest things I own are the Lost World and Jurassic Park production used or production cast uh, maquettes. So let's get started placing them where I want them. Now, as these maquettes are sometimes front heavy, I am actually putting a little bit of spare anthracite fabric on the end of the tail and then just putting a weight on top. This stops any abrasion on the tail and stops the figure from falling over. So that's all the maquettes placed roughly where I'd like them and I think they already look fantastic. Now, as with the Jurassic Park cups, I think I'd like to play with the vertical positioning of these maquettes to really show them off. If you saw my last video where I created um, a custom display for my Jurassic Park cups, you'll remember that I created the risers simply out of cardboard and masking tape. If you haven't seen that video, link is down below. But that's all this is, it's just cardboard and masking tape, really simple. And I've used a flexible piece of card on the corner here because I know that this part's gonna be front facing. So just to create something that's a little bit more appealing, I've added a curve on this corner here and uh, this will rest against the kind of far end of the cabinet. Um, I've also cut out the sheets of anthracite that I'm gonna cover this in. This is the part that's gonna go around the outside, the band around the bottom. So uh, yeah, I should be ready to uh, glue these onto the box just like I did in the last display episode. Okay, here we are back online again, and I'm always amazed at the kind of services and materials that you can source online. I'm looking for two sheets of wood uh, at a specific size to essentially enclose the space of my racking and turn it more into like a cabinet than open racking. I'm gonna use hardwood plywood. I don't want it to be too thick because I don't want it to weigh down the racking. So I don't want my racking to lean to one side. So I'm hoping 12 millimeters is thick enough that it looks presentable, uh, but thin enough that it doesn't weigh down my racking. Okay, so the wood sheets have arrived from woodsheets.com. Here you can see one of the wooden sheets in action and I've just propped it up against the racking and I think it really does enclose the space nicely. Now, I don't like the look of the wood. <clears throat> I think I'd like to make it darker. Uh, maybe give it like a walnut uh, stain to make it look a little bit darker. But first I want to look at attaching it to the racking. Now rather handily for me, at the top and middle of the racking there are these drilled holes. Uh, and these are perfect for attaching uh, the wood via a nut and bolt. So I just went in with a sharp pencil and traced through the racking uh, where the first hole is. And I've done the same for the other three holes that I want to use to fasten this piece. And then it's just a case of drilling the hole through using my cordless power drill. So to fasten the wooden panel to the racking, I went for these nuts and bolts. Uh, I went for a quite a dark bolt because uh, I want it to uh, match the sort of finish of the inside of the racking and not be too noticeable. But on the outside, I thought actually it'd be quite nice if you had these brass round headed nuts. I'm hoping to go for sort of like a museum look with these wood panels. I want them to kind of look like uh, something in a museum or museum library. So with a wood panel back in place, let's feed the bolt through. You can see it looks nice on the inside and then start fastening the brass nuts on the outside. So there we go, I think that looks fairly nice. And the good thing is about these nuts and bolts is that they're detachable, so I can remove this panel and stain it later 
Uh, but yeah, I think that attached fairly well. So we've got wooden wood panel on this end. Excuse the Jurassic Park toys being stored inside. And then we've got the wood panel on this side as well, just enclosing those two ends of the racking display. Okay, so the clear acrylic sheets that I'm going to use to glaze my racking uh, has arrived. And similarly uh, to how I sourced the wood sheets from woodsheets.com, uh, these come from plasticsheets.com. And uh, I'm assuming it's the same people running both websites. Now the acrylic sheets do look blue at the moment, and that's because it's got this blue protective film on either side. Once you peel that off, it actually looks clear like glass. Um, it's simply to protect the surface finish while you're cutting or drilling and in fact I'm going to be adding holes uh, to the corners of the acrylic pieces in order to mount it to the racking so I'm going to keep this film on until I'm done and then I can remove it uh, so that I've got brand new looking acrylic glazing. And we're through. So now it's just a case of doing the same thing for the three other holes. These are the pieces that are actually going to fasten uh, the acrylic sheet to the racking. So I've got a little uh, dark nut that's going to come through uh, the reverse of the racking. So it's going to come through those holes. And then the acrylic sheets are going to sit on top of this nut. And then I've got this little knurled and threaded uh, knob. And that's going to tighten up nicely and secure and fasten the acrylic sheet to the racking. Okay, so before I epoxy in the bolts coming through, uh, what I want to do is actually mark up on the acrylic uh, where I need to put the holes. Or mark. There's the there. Okay. And you may have spotted, I'm just storing my vintage Jurassic Park Series 1 toys up on the top there. I think they look quite nice. Now I'm using a different drill bit to make the hole in this acrylic. Um, it's a stepped drill bit, so it gets bigger. Uh, as you drill further into it and I've actually marked off uh, the depth on the drill bit uh, that I need. There we go. And the reason why that stepped drill bit is so handy is because if you went straight in with a large drill bit on a sheet of acrylic it can be prone to fracturing or cracking around the hole so you have to start small and get larger and usually what I do is I step up in drill bits in size but this stepped drill bit actually allows me to do it in one go, which is really cool. And to reinforce the holes on the acrylic, I've bought these two part brass eyelets and uh, they're threaded, so they actually fit together and then screw together on either side, which is quite cool. And that just gives that extra strength to that hole um, and means that the weight of the acrylic is kind of distributed around the hole and um, prevents the kind of upper part maybe from cracking if you just had the the bolt going through and it was just plastic, it might crack over time. I let into place, hopefully the hole I've drilled will accommodate the front piece. Yeah, there we go, snaps in. And then the piece on the reverse side should just screw into place. There we go. Just tighten that up and there we go. I can now epoxy these two uh, in place and then continue with the uh, the other two holes. Okay, so to secure my bolts to my racking, I'm going to be using this two-part uh, Gorilla Glue epoxy. Uh, this stuff is stinky, this stuff is really strong and it bonds in five minutes. So uh, I'm using gloves and I'm going to make sure that the room uh, is well ventilated. First off, I'm just going to remove the cap here. You can remove and replace this plastic cap, so keep that to one side. And then you just use the two-part syringe, press it out, and you need a bit of both liquids. So with a bit more push, you can get some of the yellow out. There's a yellow and a clear glue there. Time to put that lid back on. Best way to do it is to stand it up and just push it in. Okay, so I've got my epoxy here and it's not mixed. Now I've got this old sculpting tool that I don't mind uh, getting uh, old and broken. This is an old one, a very cheap one as well. 
uh, and what I do is I just mix the epoxy together and the two parts uh, have a chemical reaction that forms uh, a really strong adhesive. Now this bonds in five minutes, so we haven't got very long. So what I do now is I take the bolt, I'm going to put some epoxy around the inside edge and then I'm going to secure the bolt in place. Good, and then I've actually got a spare nut which will secure it in place. So let's put that on. I could use the knurled knob that I've got, but it doesn't go all the way along the threaded bolts. So I want it to go tight next to the racking, and then I leave that to dry. And uh, although the epoxy actually sets up in five minutes, uh, I'm going to leave this overnight just to make sure that the epoxy is absolutely set. With the bolt epoxied in place, I was able to attach the knurled fastener and here is the acrylic sheet safely fastened to the racking. The only thing that remains is to remove the blue film on either side. So that's how my Jurassic Park display is looking as of January 2020. I'm really pleased with the wooden enclosures and the acrylic sheets. They really do look like museum panes of glass. And to think that this was made from inexpensive storage racking, I think it's really come along well. I still have some finishing touches to make. I want to finish the wood at either end and uh, all the uh, spaces in the display are still temporary. I'm just sorting those out. So stay tuned for future videos where I'll be upgrading this display. Okay guys, rate, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.